behind us is Highway 64, where millions of people every year venture up to the Grand Canyon here in Arizona, passing by some amazing trails and some really cool sights. So we're on our way to Overland Expo in Colorado, and we stopped here in Arizona for the night, and down that trail that we're about to head is a very cool historic point of interest where several famous people have been. So we're gonna go venture down this trail, check it out, and go find a cool camp spot. And it's gonna be an amazing next couple days. I'm excited, I can't wait, because we're gonna meet up with some very good friends and their sweet little sidekick. That's right, all right, you ready? Yep. Let's go. All righty. Regina and I have been looking forward to this trip for months, and we can't wait to get back up in the mountains in Colorado. But it will take us a couple days and many miles before we get there. Day one has us starting off in the Kaibab National Forest, which is just south of the Grand Canyon. This area is filled with forest roads, dispersed camping sites, wildlife, and some very interesting history. This area is one I picked because it happens to be about halfway between our home in San Diego where we left this morning and the place we are hoping to camp in Colorado tomorrow before meeting up with our friends and heading for the mountains the following day. Now, we were only a short way down the trail and I made a slight navigation error. And well, this brought something to light that we are gonna have to work on on this trip. All right, I think we want to turn down this trail here on the left, huh? You sure? Yeah. Let's... Okay. Well, there's a possible campsite. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Wrong turn. You're going to have to back it out. <laughs> back it up? <laughs> okay, hon, uh, go ahead and back it up. <laughs> Are you sure about this? Yeah, well, I mean, come on, you got to learn. Different than the Navy, C1, D1, T1, but okay, here goes. So Regina needs to work on her backing up the trailer. We'll see how this goes. Whoa, whoa, slower, slower. Straight it out, turn the other way, turn the other way. Hey. <laughs> Crank the oil the other way. You're good, you're not gonna hit anything yet. It's still obeying me. All right, stop, stop, stop. All right, I have an idea. <laughs> On this trip, uh -huh. before it's over, we're gonna get you to learn how to back up a trailer. Yeah. Let's try again. <laughs> Pull forward, try again. Yeah, okay. All right, that's good. This time, just go a little slower. You'll have a little more control. It's not working. That's not the way I wanted to go. <laughs> so turn it the other way. Just go slow. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, well, second time wasn't a charm, but we need to get to the site because I don't want to get wet. We might get some rain. So let's just uh, let's just turn it around. You can go right around that little campsite right there. Why didn't you have me do this to begin with? Well, because you need to learn how to back up the trailer. <laughs> Regina has navigated this Jeep and trailer through some very technical trails in the past, but I guess she has never really had to back it up. So I think on this trip, we'll have to find some excuses for her to practice. Now, in all fairness, backing up a short trailer is more challenging than a longer one, and then doing it on the dirt adds another level of difficulty. But I know she'll get the hang of it. It's just going to take some practice. Okay, before we go look for camp tonight, we do have one stop we want to make. Almost at it. You gotta catch it before it turns too sharp on you. Oh, you were doing so good! <laughs>
This is pretty cool, huh? This is amazing. It's sad that it's in ruins, but I was reading that it was built in 1927 by a former World War I army pilot. I think his name was Van Zant, And it was visited, I believe the year after it was built by Charles Lindbergh. And I think Amelia Earhart was here as well. I don't think they flew out of it, but I think they definitely visited. That's super cool. This site was once hustling and bustling with tourists looking to climb aboard a plane to get a spectacular bird's eye view of the Grand Canyon. It's easy to imagine all the prop planes that were once housed here in this old hangar when they were new and shiny. Close your eyes and you can almost hear the sounds of turning wrenches, engines firing up, and the smell of fuel and oil. Today, it's just an old abandoned building with decaying wood, rusty old sheet metal, and lingering memories of what used to be a pretty cool historic stop for the day. So this was pretty cool, and I'm wearing a fitting shirt, I think. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yes, you are. All right, we're going to go find camp, but first, there's a nice big flat spot. You want to try backing up a couple times? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just getting ready to roll out of here, and lo and behold, this Bronco shows up, and it's got KC lights, and I know these guys. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey. What are you guys doing? We just came for it's a cruise. Yeah. yeah. What a great place to explore, huh? I, know, I kind of feel like we're stalkers or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I know you. <laughs> awesome. Cool YouTubers over here. Yeah. Oh, well, wait. I know that one. <laughs> the cool thing is, guys, they just gave us some intel on a really cool camp spot that's way over on that mountain. Don't I tell anybody. I think we're going to go check it out. Yeah, we won't give the details away. No yeah. dates. How cool, running into them. <laughs> that was pretty That's neat. Awesome. Small world. Small world. Uh, and they said there's some wild horses, so maybe we'll get lucky and we missed, catch them. We must have just missed them. Yeah, we'll check it out. Okay, we have an airport. It's a little overgrown, but this used to be a f airport, a nice flat you area. runway? Yeah, runway. Uh, so why don't we take a minute, since it's nice and open here, and I'm gonna show you how to back up. And okay. that way, maybe watching the steering wheel and watching you know the trailer. You know I've watched you do this and it has Yeah, but now you can in. be more focused on it. <laughs> okay, so pay attention is what you're saying. Yeah, so ready? So if I turn the steering wheel to driver. Uh -huh. driver. I, I get the concept, then the back is supposed to go the passenger. No. So now so now look, <laughs> look which direction. So, yeah. Okay, so, so now. You turn driver, trailer goes passenger. Right, so now if I want to correct. Okay. I go the other way. You don't want it to go too far. Okay. And I'm not, I'm. I get the concept, it's the execution that just doesn't work. Okay, I think maybe just going a little slower and then just slower. What are you saying? Well, don't, don't, don't let it get. Why? What are you going? Don't let it get too far before you make the correction. Like, okay. try to make corrections, so. All right, you're on your own. No. <laughs> nope, nope. not cooperating. I'm telling you, it hates me. You got it straight. It doesn't look very straight. All right. Should we go uh, explore some more and maybe try again later? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. On our way back out through the gate, we came across several horses just off the trail. We had stopped to take some pictures, but they were very curious and friendly. Also, I got the feeling they were sizing up the amount of horses in my 392 because they were getting pretty close to the Jeep. This was a special treat, and I think the highlight of the day for Regina. Okay, we really need to go find camp before dark and possibly before it starts raining again.
All right, I think we found cap for tonight. Nice level spot. <laughs> Some pre-existing uh, fire rings here. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Regina backed in a couple times. Um, <laughs> no, I backed up so I could pull in right, straight. Yeah. You're getting the hang of it. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, but the horses, how, come on, talk about the horses oh, for a second. Oh, the horses were beautiful. They were just so sweet. They, were they really just cool. wanted attention and love. And yeah. yeah, and they were loving on my Jeep. They were, they loved it. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were going to start eating it. <laughs> well, Can I have a horse? I want a horse. Uh, yeah, we got we got horses. We got yeah, horses they, right there. No, I want the four-legged kind. All right. Well, we're gonna get set up, guys, and yeah. uh, hopefully, hopefully these <laughs> clouds. Like, does it doesn't rain on us oh, again. Right. Not a bad camp spot. It'll do. It's flat. We're out of the wind. And maybe the rain. Maybe we might, we might stay seems dry. To be chasing us. Yeah, we'll see what happens. What's for dinner? Uh, I'm making the sausage muffins that I made uh, yeah, before. Those are good. I like those. When we were on the Klamath uh, River in yeah, Oregon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that so was good. breakfast for dinner. Yeah. Something easy. Uh, it was cool running into Taylor and, and Natalie. Natalie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we told folks at the beginning of the video <laughs> that we are going to meet up with some people. But yeah. Those are not the ones. No, they were, were a nice surprise. <laughs> they were a nice surprise. It was totally unplanned. It was just cool to run into them. But we uh, uh, have some other friends. We that have some we other friends. Tomorrow gonna we're going to go hit a trail in Colorado. And then the next day. We're going to be in Colorado tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? yeah. Oh. And then the next day, that's when we're going to meet up with some. I think we should keep the surprise. But yeah, I'll bet yeah. a lot of folks are going to know. But they're them. wonderful. They're but, awesome people. Yeah. And I think a lot of you guys are going to know who they are. So it's going to be a good night. What I love most about our Patriot Campers trailer is that my kitchen is outside and I can enjoy the pretty views, fresh air, and great company all while preparing our meals. For tonight's dinner, I made sausage and cheese breakfast muffins, which I also made on our recent trip to Oregon. Breakfast for dinner just tastes so much better than breakfast for breakfast, although this might be because, well, I'm not a morning person. What I love about this recipe is that it's quick and easy after a long day on the trail. It has just a few basic ingredients, breakfast sausage, biscuit mix, condensed soup, cheese, and buttermilk. If you want to give it a try, you can find it on the blog at trailrecon.com. Those smell good, huh? They done? I think so. Oh. <laughs> hot. <laughs> yes, they are very hot. They smell good. They are done. Take these out and I'll start another batch since I forgot to half the recipe. I think we're going to be putting this awning up. Yeah? Yeah. How about if I supervise? <laughs> we'll give it a few more minutes, but... Hmm. Clouds are beautiful. That one looks like a fish, like the mahi-mahi, but it's only the head. So you can see the big eye and the big head. You know, dolphins. I think we're maybe. looking at two completely different clouds. I'm going to have to start taking pictures and like showing you, pointing out all the parts. Thanks for dinner. You're welcome. It's like breakfast. For dinner, but for dinner. snacks. Dinner was perfect. And while there was rain all around us, thankfully we had a dry night and we were able to enjoy our evening around the campfire. What an amazing day one on this adventure.
Good morning, everyone. We just finished packing up camp and having a really quick breakfast of some banana bread, a family favorite that I made in advance. We're about to hit the road for Southwest Colorado, where tomorrow we're gonna meet up with some really good friends. And I have two goals for today. One, that we find a really great campsite tonight, and two, that we just go straight and I don't have to back up anywhere. Um, it's gonna be a lot of road miles today, so we have to get going. Our drive today will take us northeast into the lower corner of Colorado where we plan on searching for a campsite in an area that neither of us have ever been to before. We stayed on Highway 160 for most of the drive and if you've never traveled this route, I'd recommend seeing if you can somehow plan it into your next trip. This is a very, very scenic highway. We made a few stops for gas and thankfully fuel prices seemed to get cheaper the further east we went. I planned this leg of our trip to be just around 7 hours because we really didn't want to push hard on this trip every single day. We just want to have more time to explore and relax at camp. So just after mid-afternoon we were finally back on the dirt and ready to explore a new trail. Well, we have been on the road for a little over seven hours and we finally arrived here to the southwest side of Colorado to a little trail back here is called Chicken Creek. Now, I've never been here before, but the trail should be kind of short and pretty easy. But our whole goal here is to come here and find a nice little camp spot and do a little of exploring because this just worked out to be the perfect time distance for us to get us to where we need to be tomorrow so we can get up in the morning and meet up with our friends. And then we're going to go hit some really more adventures adventurous trails. But right now, we're just going to head up here, see what we see, and keep our eyes out for a good campsite. Chicken Creek Trail is just under nine miles long and is mostly easy with a few rocks and ruts along the way that should make things pretty interesting. There was a bit of mud from recent rains, but I don't think this is a trail I would want to explore during or right after a hard rain, as this mud looks like it could get pretty sticky. There are a few other trails in this area that could make for a full day or two of exploring, and we saw a couple potential campsites along the way, but we wanted to get just a bit higher in elevation to see if we could find a spot with maybe a nice little view. walk over this peak for a second and see what I see there but this might work because if we keep going too much further it's gonna take us a while to get out of here tomorrow we gotta factor that in a little bit so okay, let me just walk this. up here for a second Alrighty. okay I think the spots gonna work for us 
but I think we need to back the trailer in. <laughs> so what I want you to do is pull forward and you're going to have to turn the trailer back to get Maybe. it back there. Yep. Got to give it a go. <laughs> no, I think you should do this. You've been practicing. Come on. Oh, yeah. You've seen how my practice is gone. You got it. Oh, I don't. I'm not a good teacher, guys. Definitely not a good teacher. Just slightly the other direction. There. All right, a little trial and error, and we got the trailer in our spot. Regina's getting her rain boots on. But uh, we got a good little camp spot just off the trail. There's this little section here, nice flat area, and kind of opens up to this meadow over here, which is beautiful. The temperature is like 70 degrees, there's no wind, there has been a few sprinkles on the way up, but I think we're good, hopefully, but we got the awning if we need it. So we're going to get camp all set up and then Regina has something tasty for dinner she's going to be working on. All right, we've got camp all set up, and uh, we really like this spot. It's really nice. Now, you may have noticed there's two things that you have never seen before because we are using them for the very first time. One is the Starlink, which is something that's going to really be beneficial for us. It's going to help us do a little bit more work when we're out here off the grid. I mean, I like to be off the grid and disconnected, but sometimes on long trips like this, that's a good tool for us. And so we're going to be trying that out uh, for the first time today. So far, we've already got connectivity, which is good. And the other thing, is I know Regina's excited about. Uh -huh. What do you got? I have my lovely new Blackstone grill that I have been bugging you about for you ever and ever. Yep. What are you cooking on it tonight for the first time? I'm going to make some homemade panko crusted chicken tenders and some sauteed green beans with bacon. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how good the Blackstone works because that thing is a Fingers little crossed. I've it's never like... used it before. Your dinner could be burnt. So. Oh, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I travel with a large softbox that functions as my pantry with all my dried goods and a small softbox that has all of my spices for pretty much anything I could want to cook. My overpacking has actually come in handy more than once, including the time friends forgot taco seasoning and we were able to make our own from all the different spices I had with me. I take inventory of everything before we hit the road and restock and add items as needed. I was pretty excited to give my new Blackstone a whirl, so I chose to cook up a few relatively easy things. Sauteed fresh green beans and bacon, along with panko crusted chicken nuggets. First, I prepped the green beans and diced the bacon. This is a really simple and delicious side dish, and not only is everything better with bacon, I figured the grease would help season the new grill top and add some flavor to the nuggets. 
I set those aside and seasoned up the buttermilk with a variety of spices, including paprika, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Next, I diced the chicken tenderloins into bite-sized pieces and let them soak while I prepared the batter, an egg dip, and the panko and flour mixture. This may have been a little ambitious for my first go at the Blackstone and for camp cooking, but hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. The crispy bacon and tender green beans were yummy, and the chicken nuggets were juicy inside and crunchy outside. There was only one problem. I really have to remember that I'm not cooking for three hungry boys, or if you count Brad. As usual, I made way too much food for just me and Brad. Hope you're hungry, I made a lot. Smells good, I'll bet I could eat quite a bit. Okay. So chicken nuggets at camp. It's a first. It is. How'd they turn out? Mm. Super tender. Mm. It's a little smaller. I don't like it. It's real crusty on the outside and then smooth and juicy inside. I like it. I like it. You can't go wrong with putting bacon on green beans. <laughs> no, you can't go wrong with putting bacon on anything. Mm -hmm. dinner was fantastic and some of those chicken nuggets got soaked up in some of that bacon grease and oh those were just like over the top dinner was awesome uh, I've got dish duty because that's how it works and uh, we've just had a beautiful night it's so calm and the sky was so red there for a few minutes it's just beautiful so we're gonna hang out tonight relax Get a good night's rest and we have a early start tomorrow because we need to get off the trail and meet up with our friends for some more exploring. And I gotta say, coming up this trail, I expected it just to be a plain dirt road and it was fun just to have some of those rocks and a couple ruts coming up here. So this is more than just an easy dirt road. We didn't go all the way to the end, but maybe next time we're out here, we'll make a full round trip of it. But tomorrow morning, we've just gotta hightail it out of here and, uh, and go meet up with our buddies. It's gonna be fun. On the next leg of this adventure, we continue our trek deeper into the Colorado backcountry, meet up with our good friends Matt and Kara, and head for the mountains. We find some fun trails that none of us have ever explored before, get really lucky with finding some epic camping spots, and try something a little different for dinner. Be sure to turn on your notifications because you won't want to miss the next video. Thanks for watching.